This is the Owns Odyssey podcast. Thank you for being here. Hello and you're very welcome to this episode of the podcast, uh, Pub Talking Messiah. We're talking about Russell Brand here today and we want to get down and dirty and figure out if Russell Brand really is somebody that can baptize people or is he just a bullshitting pub talking messiah? A fellow who thinks he knows it all because he's had the fame, he's had the money, he's had the sex, he's had the partners, he's had the attention and now he's trying to bring it to that very very next level where he is baptizing people in the river while wearing white fronts when there's no need for the white fronts. The fella that I was baptizing was wearing a a wetsuit. The fella across from him, now he was wearing underwear, which still was a bit much, but I can understand. Maybe he forgot his shorts and he said, you know what? These jocks will do. We've often, we've been there. Russell Brand, on the other hand, is going around wearing these white fronts that Show maybe a bit too much of his legs. Some people might say no, but I'm saying yes. Show a bit too much of his legs. Uh, The wife fronts, of course, were discontinued many moons ago. A big jock in the 90s, I think. Everyone was, everyone, I didn't see many people wearing. I I wasn't looking at people wearing jocks or underwear in the 90s, but I was wearing them. And they tended to be white, mostly. And then people copped on and they realized that wearing White underwear is not really good for a start because if you pee and it gets on the front of it, people can see it. So there's always going to be the potential for an emergency when you're out and about. Just say you're out doing a bit of shopping, you shit yourself. You've got to see, oh, my jocks, people maybe get in an accident and you fall over. People want to say, pull his pants off. Let's cut his underwear because he needs to get surgery right away on his ass or something. I don't know. There's always the potential that someone is going to see your underwear in public. And so Russell Brand knew that and he turns up and he baptized this fella. And uh, some people are saying fair play to him and some people are saying he did the wrong thing. What do you think? I think he's a full bullshitter, complete and absolute bullshitter. Um, but we're going to get stuck into him now. We're going to do a bit of a deep dive with our boy Russell Brand. It feels like he's doing a Russell rebrand, if you get what I'm saying. Ooh, yeah. Um Himself and Katy Perry were married there years ago. And apparently, um, Russell Brand broke up with her right before she was about to go on stage. It was December 29th, 2011, I think. I could have made that up. Even if I did, I'm going to continue talking. Um, Katy Perry hasn't had so many good things to say about Russell Brand. But nevertheless, in some ways, this man is striving from, I don't know if you'd call it strength to strength, but certainly from number to number. And uh, he has a podcast out at the moment where he talks about things that are happening in the public eye. And he generally goes towards the crazier opinion, which I suppose is kind of what I'm doing here now. I'm talking with Russell Brand. So that's just the nature of the fucking game. I'm fucking sorry, boys. But um, he was on the GAC as well for a long time growing up, uh, Russell Brand. That was really w- where he started off, if we want to go back to the, the beginnings of this whole situation. Russell Brand started off, he was addicted to... Some drug, I'm not quite sure which one, it was Gak, I think. Um, and he would suck people off. Well, he did on a documentary one time. He took people off for money. Uh, I don't know if that's true. So please, again, if the YouTube overlords are watching this, I don't mean that. Um, but anyways, he got himself in a bit of a tricky situation and life was fairly tough for him. And then he turned his life around and congratulations to you on that, Russell. And he got himself on to Big Brother. The uh, George Orwellian named show about a, sh- a house where people have cameras in the house and they watch you all day, every single movement you do. It started off as a great social experiment, end up getting a bit fucking weird. And Russell Brand used to present a show at the end of that called, I think it was Celebrity Big Brother, where he'd go around with a shtick talking about the people in the house. A oh, lovely bit of green tea there. Anyway. <clears throat> Anyways, um, Russell Brand, he made his name for himself on this show as a flamboyant, outspoken Englishman who could appear to pull words out of nowhere. He'd be saying words that you wouldn't have even thought of, like eloquent and uh, cascading and uh, voluptuous. No, he wouldn't say those words, but he'd be pulling words out of a, out of a fucking bowl of words. And some people were calling it a salad bowl because he was saying things that just sounded good from a distance. Like, what was that thing he said? It sounded good. And another person was like, that was, oh, that's bullshit. 
complete and absolute bullshit that he was talking. But bullshit walks. And he started walking big time into the arms of Hollywood, where he bumped in. He didn't bump into her, but he started dating Katy Perry, as I said earlier on. And they had they didn't have any kids together, but they had a good time together before things hit the rocks. There was um, there was a period there where they were the hottest couple in Hollywood. People couldn't stop talking about them, and um, they hit the rocks anyways. And uh, Russell Brand went his own way. And then he brought out his own podcast called, uh, I think it was called The Trues or something like that. And now he's got his own one, as I said. But throughout all of this, recently he's been back in the news because he baptized a fella in the middle of the water and uh, he's wearing white fronts. We're going to take a look at some white fronts right after this advert. Hey, are you sick of eating food? Do you fancy finding a new product that's on the market right now that's going to save you not only eating food, but also having to wash those pots and pans that you get so sick of, whether it's in the dishwasher or you wash them by hand. Well, if you're fed up of that lifestyle, I've got a product for you. Introducing Nutrilife. Nutrilife is a liquid form product that gives you over 10,000 calories. So all you need to do is drink five liters in the morning and then five liters at lunch, <clears throat> excuse me, and then five liters at night time, three times per day for seven days of a week. And you don't need to eat food ever again. That's right. Kiss goodbye to your breakfast, your lunch, your, your dinner, even your supper. Any snack that you've ever worried about eating, um, you don't have to worry about that anymore because Nutrilife is jam-packed full of vitamins, calories, 10,000 calories per five liters. And also, um, it comes in many different flavors. Curry, lasagna, uh, cream, cream, all sorts of flavors that you can get your lips around if you you like the sound of it, then please head on over to my website where I'll be selling that by the bucket load. Uh, delivery is free as well, so if you just want to send me on your air code, I will be able to drop that to the house. If you don't like fluids, I know a lot of people that don't like to eat fluids, you can take it in tablet form. It's a big tablet, comes in about that size, and some people have been asking me, is it possible to break that in half and shove it up me gooch? I said, no, you can't do that. It won't do anything for you. Trust me. I've been there. Um, but the tablet itself can be nibbled, or it can be just cut into over the course of uh, a few hours across the day and again as I said it gives you 10,000 calories it's called Neutralife it's on the market right now and it's going to change and revolutionise the fitness world tell everyone about this podcast please now we're looking at underwear from the 90s and the Y front for those of you that are not familiar with the Y front this was basically an underwear that had a window at the front so you could just pull it to one side pull out your piece do what you got to do, put your piece back in, pull up your pants and you're gone. Whether <clears throat> Nowadays, it's all about pulling down the, uh, the jeans and then the underwear and everything's out on display, including your butt cheeks. This, the white front in particular was, it was a nice underwear. I'll give a kudos where it de deserves to get kudos because the white underwear was good in its own way in the sense that you didn't need to pull it down. So people didn't get to get a look from, from behind. This is something that women don't suffer with. But if you're a man in a toilet, in a public toilet, and you need to go in for a pee or whatever, and just it's just say it's like a bus station, you don't know who's going to walk in behind you. You have your butt cheeks on display. They could come up behind you and do anything to you. So in that sense, the wife front was a very good underwear in that way because people didn't know you were peeing a lot of the time as well. So that's why it got popular. That's my belief. What's your belief um, on that situation? I think uh, they've been done away with because they don't look cool anymore. But we're going to take a bit of a, a dive into the, the white front and uh, where it comes from. White front. Um, white fronts for sale. I don't think I'd be buying them anyway. Let's have a look at these white fronts for sale. I don't know who would be buying. I suppose that they're not. I thought they were secondhand for some reason. Um, nice pair of jocks there. These are the ones I don't like. These Andrew Christian ones where it's just it's just too little. Too little, too late. Um, I'm not sure should they be sold anymore, to be honest. I think personally, but this is probably me being prude, they should be legal. I just think that they, yeah, they're $30.75 a rip off as well for that. Like you're, you're paying more money for less jock. So I don't think so. No. Um, right. We'll go back to the white fronts and what the hell? White fronts. Let me see. White fronts wiki. Where they came from. Briefs, they used to call them as well. 
Uh, briefs are a type of short, form-fitting underwear and swimwear, as opposed to styles where material extends down the thighs. Briefs have various different styles, usually with the waistband attached to the fabric. Now, again, the waistband came in around the late 90s, and it was cool to be seen with the waistband. You might have one of your favorite brands there, like Calvin Classics or Hugo Boss or someone like that. Or if you've seen a fella with the waistband shown, you could be guaranteed that that lad was getting a lot of action. Whether it's, uh, I remember a lot of the white fronts didn't have any of that, didn't have any of, of that jock strap there at all. It was just pure, it was just pure material around the upper thighs, pelvis and the ball and sack. Um, so the history of, let's have a look at the history anyways. Men's classic briefs were first sold in January 19, 1935. That's a long, long time ago. And then if we go to this one here, this is sort of the style you could be talking about here as well. Um, you'd see this fairly often in the changing rooms of a football game, except the boys would be in there. And you'd be sweating hard after a good hard game. And there'd be no rush to get out of there. And uh, what's this say? As far as I'm concerned, jockey is the only underwear there is. Because no other jockey underwear has that jockey fit, that jockey feel. That jockey style, just jockey, okay? They're a nice pair of underwear, though, I must say. Like, you, you can't go wrong with those. You got the stripes to make it look like you have a boat. And even this fella's like, look at that. Look at the hand. Just to say, if, say like, they fit me perfectly. The wife loves them. And there's nothing wrong with them. Now, there's something about this fella that makes me think, number one, he might not be real. And number two, he kind of pulls them off. And actually, if you look right there as well in the background, you have a picture of a fella throwing a baseball. And it's giving you a real nice shot there of a real nice shot there of this underwear that you probably can't see. That's maybe part of the beauty of it. You don't get to see the lines of the underwear. That's another issue that I never considered before today. So that's in that sense. Yeah, I understand. Like, I know that a lot of women don't like to see the lining of their underwear shown on their pants, I think. Could be wrong on that one. Please don't judge me. Um, but that's the white fronts. Now, Russell Brand, I'll just show you the Russell Brand one. Russell Brand baptism. And the baptism, it goes, it goes back a long way, the baptism. People have been getting baptized for thousands of years, not just hundreds, but thousands of years in different bodies of water. Um, Russell Brand's, let me turn that shit off. What's going on here? Okay, right. Russell Brand's conversion to Christianity continued this week as he interpreted the Bible and performed a baptism in his underpants. That's the kind of headline you would not have read in the 90s, in the noughties, even 10 years ago. But that's the kind of bullshit now we have to be looking at. 49-year-old was even seen standing in a lake with two other men. You wouldn't mind that. One of whom was also wearing nothing but his boxers as they carried out the religious practice. We maybe don't know enough about what happened back in the day. Maybe Jesus was going around in a pair of jocks. Brand posted the photos on social media. This is, see, this is the thing. This is the thing. Once you start posting on social media, you're, you're saying, oh yeah, well, yeah, I want you to see that. Whether well, if Russell Brand had just been caught in the water in just his underwear and someone had taken a picture from a long way, say some paparazzi, then I would say, okay, okay, they caught him. They caught him. He didn't want that to be seen. But he was caught. But instead, Russell Brand, on his own pages, he uploads it to the pages. So everyone can see it. So everyone is clearly going to comment on Russell Brand's jocks. Now, let me ask you this question real quick. You got time for the answer? Think about it. Is it okay for men to wear white white fronts? White white fronts while baptizing somebody? Some people would say, of course, go ahead, do it. That's you sexualizing the body there. That's you looking at the body and sexual. Like you don't, you don't see a pig in the nip and go, Oh, look at that pig's arse. Sometimes you do. Um, now the other people might say, yeah, Russell Brown was trying to draw attention to himself. And there's a part in the Bible. Now I don't really know much about it myself, but it does say that if you're going to be worshiping or if you're going to be talking to God, believing in him, do it in the privacy of your own gap. Brand posted the photos on social media accompanied by the caption, it might seem a bit too soon, you think, to be baptizing people. 
But the apostles did it on day one. So here we are. Well, the apostles didn't hang around because I suppose that was their thing. They were apostles. You're a lad on the internet that just talks shit. And there they are. Look at them. I feel, you know who I feel, you know who I feel most confused about? The fella in the, in the middle. The fella in the middle. I'm like, wow. Do you really think that Brand is going to be the fella to baptize you? Like imagine getting baptized by Sylvester Stallone. Or uh, Jonah Hill. Or who have nothing? Ryan Gosling. Imagine, like, don't get me wrong, I'd love to be baptized by Gosling Hill, the other person I mentioned. But I wouldn't believe I was baptized. I'd be like, oh, did you see? Did you see that? I was in the water with Ryan Gosling. Oh, he baptized. Yeah, he baptized me. We didn't really. Ryan Gosling from Barbie. Um, Ryan, uh, and then the dog. Is that a cat or a dog? It's hard to know. Somebody said it was a cat, but if you look at it from a different angle, it looks like a little small terrier jab. Um, Russell Brand said, believe in you will receive. Can it be true? Depends what you're looking to receive. Good old Russ. Maybe it's this you're after. Uh, maybe we all are after. Huh? Think about that one for a sec. Get him to the Greek. Now, this is something I wanted to talk about. Get him to the Greek was a movie that Russell Brand was in with a couple of other bad boys. We're going to get into that now in a second. But first, here's another advert. You see this? This is me. Years ago. Lost and confused. <laughs> Stupid little child. Hadn't a clue about life, what it was about. Foolishly wearing my Man United duvet covers, thinking I was something. Mm. Bedroom wall covered in posters. Some of my heroes at the time, Pallister, Lee Sharp, Erwin, Schmeichel. Even a picture of gigs there. I was a small child. Not really strong at all. Or so I thought. And then I got my hands on some Neutralife. Neutralife is a product that's packed jam full of calories. How many? I hear you say. 10,000 calories in each 15 litres that you drink. It comes in a powder form and all you simply must do is add water to it every morning, afternoon and right before you go to bed. Neutra- Neutralife will help you... Not only become fitter, stronger, faster, but it's packed full of calories and vitamins. Vitamins that you didn't even know existed. Vitamin B12, sure. What about vitamin B24? That's in there as well. It's in Neutralite. And I have that product to thank for making me grow up to be a big, strong man. Unlike this, this piece of shit here. Please check out my Patreon. Okay, so we're back now. Um, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at now, uh, take me to the Greek. Take me to the Greek. Take me to the Greek, which was a movie featuring, take him to the Greek. Excuse me, take him to the Greek. Him, I wonder who is him in this. Take him to the Greek. We're going to have a look at the cast. Uh, Russell Brand was in it, of course. He is... Constantly uh, courting controversy right now. I'm glad I said that. That sounded good. <laughs> and, uh, he was in the movie with P. Diddy, one, which is another uh, complete and utter uh, dodgeball. I think that's fair enough to say. I think that that people are, I don't think anyone is defending Diddy at this moment in time. So the question to P. Diddy, the question, the answer to that would be P. He did. Um, anyways. Who else in it? Jonah Hill. He has been in a touch of controversy. I don't really know too much about it, but I think he was uh, maybe being a bit of a bollocks to people behind the scenes. I need to look into that a bit more, too. Maybe we can have a little look down Jonah Hill Avenue and see what he's been up to. Ross, Rose Byrne. No, I don't. I think she was grand. Elizabeth Moss, Colomini. Let's leave him alone. I don't think he's ever done anything wrong. He's the first Irishman in space. I know I've said that before. I keep saying it to people to see what they think. Sometimes it gets a laugh, sometimes it doesn't. Christina Aguilera was in it. Jesus Christ, who's that? Lars Ulrich and Tom Felton, Nick Kroll, Christian Bell, and Pink was in it. Well, Pink, yeah, I have good time for Pink now, so I do. But do I have good time for Russell Brand? I don't think I do. Let me say something to you. 
Russell Brand is walking down the street. You are also walking down the street, but you, you get a phone call. Hey, the house is blown up. It's fallen to pieces. The house is gone. Um, you've lost everything. Everything you've ever worked for you, it's gone. You walk past Russell. He's like, what's wrong with you? You're crying. Yeah, Russell, um, I've lost everything. Can I stay with you for a while? Russell, where's he gone? He's fucked up because he doesn't truly care about us. Um, he's got plenty of money in the bank. His attitude is a bit, look at me. I'm Russell Brand, even though I'm also making a video here now looking for people to watch it. So actually, now that I have you, please do not forget to like and subscribe in this podcast and uh, let's spread the word. Let's make this the biggest podcast the world has ever seen. Apparently, podcasts are still popular. So I'm trying to sort of tap into that market. So please, if you do, give this a like and share. It would mean the world to me. And let's get back to Russell Brand. Um, <clears throat> Let me see now. What's just going on over here now? So Get Me to the Greek was a movie from, let me see. Get Me to the Greek. Aaron works at a record company that is affected due to a recession. Furthermore, the this boss assigns him to bring English rock star Adius Snow from London to Los Angeles within the span of 72 hours. And then Russell Brand comes over and he's a real bad boy about the whole thing. And uh, he does all this kind of cool stuff. Like, look at this. Like, what? Like, I don't know. I don't really know. No, I do know. That's not right. That is not right. The fella with the, the haircut as well. He knows exactly what he's playing at. He wants a bit of the Russell Brand attention. So he's just like, whatever, I'm going to turn up. Clearly, he's got confidence to pull off that haircut. I'm a bit jealous of, of it myself because I was never able to do it. But he is in there with Russell Brand. He's got a big tattoo on his back. So he's like, look at me. I've got a tattoo. I've got a beautiful ponytail. I've got zero issues with baldness. And I'm in the water with Russell Brand and the three of us are fucking hugging. Someone better take a picture of this. In fact, I'm sure it was pre-planned. You happy, boys? You happy now that the truth has come out about what I truly think about you, the three of you, and even baptized boy? You fucking get it too. I would have loved to just went in there and just get out of the water, boys. But anyways, power to him. I'm not having a dig. Power to him. If that's the way he wants to do things, then look, it's not on me. I'm not the boss there. But I want to ask you your questions. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you think he's uh, a good guy or a bad guy. And uh, I also want to thank everybody as well for, for listening and watching this podcast. No matter where you are in the world, it's great to hear from you and your, in your comments below. And anywhere at all, if you want to message me on Gmail, owncolly at gmail.com. It's great to chat to you. And I'd love to engage more with you. And uh, maybe we'll do some live streams together and we can get to know each other. Get to know the, get to know, uh, okay. get to know each other a bit better, yeah? A bit more eye contact. Maybe we can bring some people on, have a bit of a chat, talk about things like this and talk about, uh, P. Diddy and not, not just that sort of stuff, but just life. Let's have a nice conversation and I'd love to get to know you a bit better, genuinely. And, um, looking forward to hearing from you as well. So yeah, hit me up in the email or anywhere you want, YouTube below here in the comments. And look after yourself. And if you, let me see, if you've ever, you know, a question, something you want to get off your chest, please don't hes hesitate to ask. And I hope you're keeping well. Have a lovely weekend. And uh, how else can I, how else can I draw this out now? Um, that's it really, I suppose. That's all I have. Yeah. I'm just going to spend a bit of time here doing a bit more research on the internet on the whole Russell Brand situation. Hope you're well anyways, and take care. This is the Owns Odyssey podcast. Thanks for being here. Mm.